The United Nations Economic and Social Council opened what was scheduled as the final day of its annual high-level segment on Monday by tackling corruption, a deep-seated and persistent issue which stifles growth in many developing countries, while discussing the need to improve accountability and transparency in sustainable development. Speakers called for U.N. member states to work hard to root out corruption at its source and to cooperate with international partners to establish legitimate systems that work for the many rather than the few. No society, no social contract can function without honesty, without trust. That is why we demand accountability from donors, from recipients and from partners. And that is why we must continue to wage a serious fight against corruption. In an era when so many of the world's leading institutions, public and private, are suffering from a crisis of confidence, ensuring transparency and accountability is essential to rebuilding public trust in our markets, our political structures, and our social contracts. Conservative estimates suggest that corruption drains about 40 billion U.S. dollars from the coffers of developing countries every year. That's 700,000 U.S. dollars from each developing country a day. For most low-income nations, this amounts to a staggering 8 to 25 percent of GDP, an enormous sum stolen from development. These resources could go towards roads, schools, or medicines instead lines in the pockets of perpetrators, eroding faith in public institutions and political leadership and threatening honest business practices. Corruption is corrosive of societies and contributes to a justified lack of trust and confidence in governance. The worst consequences of corruption are always borne by the poorest and most vulnerable in the society. For example, bribes can make basic services available only to those who can pay the bribes. The high cost of corruption is paid by the ordinary citizens who cannot obtain basic services due to the misappropriation of funds. Corruption breeds more corruption and facilitates other crimes, impedes economic and social development and has a negative impact on democracy and governance. Neither peace, development nor human rights can flourish in an atmosphere of corruption. The impact of corruption is particularly profound in societies where the rule of law is fragile and institutions are weak. After addressing the dire need for transparency and accountability to build sustainable development, discourse turned to implementing effective macroeconomic policies for job creation. People are everywhere in the world extremely concerned about employment. Uh, we need to get that focus into international policy making because at the moment we're at a higher risk of a, a vicious downward spiral getting underway which will make it harder and harder for people to get the jobs that they need. The ECOSOC is the place where we could actually turn that around and make it into a, an upward virtuous spiral. World Bank noted that a job strategy is sometimes necessary versus a growth strategy, as is needed not only for developing countries today, but also developed nations witnessing record numbers of unemployment. We have a typology of jobs challenges, and uh, an obvious case in this typology is the case of resource-rich countries, where you have investments that uh, are very important from a productivity and growth point of view, but they may not bring about uh, large numbers of jobs. They may not bring uh, the inclusion and, and the, the cohesion that one will expect. Panelists highlighted the integral role of women in employment, jobs in cities to help generate greater development, specific job needs in conflict situations, and for idle unemployed youth. Experts also tackled the issue of quality of employment and underemployment, human rights and the need for social protection floors as societies face extreme economic and social hardships across the globe. The technology chosen by the public sector per force has to be labor using and capital saving. The human rights on each level of development are set of guidelines. Uh, on how the obligation of state towards 
people uh, should be uh, fulfilled. Monday's session was scheduled as the conclusion along with the expectation of the adoption of the ministerial declaration to close ECOSOC's high-level segment. However, some member states requested more time for clarification of the latest version of the declaration. ECOSOC President Milos Kocherik granted the request and called for the meeting's conclusion to be held tomorrow. The ministerial declaration could not be adopted today at the disappointment of the president of ECOSOC, as some delegations here have asked for more time for review. Until tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm Afaf Kanja for South South News at the United Nations ECOSOC.